For some reason, Anthony Joshua really likes this Angel Fernandez guy. I don't know what it is, but he really seems to like him. Now, I don't think Fernandez is a bad trainer. From what I've seen of him and the work he's done with other fighters as well as AJ, I reckon he's pretty good, but I don't think he has the experience. In my opinion, he doesn't have the experience at the highest level in the heavyweight division to be able to get the best out of his charge, Anthony Joshua. I've got no issue with him maybe being an assistant trainer or you know some other position within the team, but I don't think he should be the head coach. And even when they brought Robert Garcia on board for the Usyk rematch, it appeared to me as though he was still the head coach, Fernandez that is, rather than Garcia, a much more experienced trainer. So I don't particularly like this dynamic. And here's another thing I don't like. You've got Angel Fernandez, whose fighter has just lost to Usyk, who's supposed to be instilling confidence in his fighter, right? And here he's coming out saying that Fury will beat Usyk and that Fury will be too much for him. Now, even if that's what he genuinely believes, I don't think you should be saying that kind of stuff publicly when you're training a fighter who's supposed to be going up against Fury or whoever else, who has aspirations to reach the top of the division again, and you're coming out saying stuff like this, it sends the wrong message to your fighter. In a roundabout way, you're kind of telling your fighter that Fury's better than you, you know? And e again, even if you believe that, even if you believe that Fury is better than your fighter, you're not supposed to convey that message, whether, and I'm talking about on a subconscious level, the fighter might not take it that way consciously, but subconsciously they might take it that way. So anyway, to quote him directly, he said about Tyson Fury, he said, oh, excuse me, about Usyk, he said, he will give Fury trouble. But I think Fury, somehow, he'll find a way. He's too big, too tall, too rangy. Personally, I don't see uh, him, as in Usyk, beating Fury. But that's what makes the, this division so interesting. Rebuild Anthony and hopefully we get, the Tyson, we get to fight Tyson Fury. And God knows we might end up fighting Usyk for a third time. Goes on to say, I think we're just waiting for names from the team regarding AJ's next fight. We're going to have another sit down, but it has to be someone in the top 10. His rebuild, there is a lot of learning still to do in the gym. Get him two or three fights, see how all these fights between Fury and Usyk play out, and then let's see where we are maybe by the end of next year. Now, that part, I don't have much of an issue with in terms of the rebuild. So let's say take a year to rebuild. That's cool by me. I would say a year, maybe 18 months. AJ's 33. I mean, you can be peaking as a heavyweight by the time you're 35, especially for the bigger heavyweights. Yeah. The smaller heavyweights, because they have to get in close, because they have to be so much better, technically a lot of the time than the bigger heavyweights, they have to train harder. You know, you've got a pressure fighter like Mike Tyson. I mean, he had to do maniacal type of training in order to be able to beat these bigger men. They don't have to train as hard, the bigger men. Okay, so that also adds to their, their longevity. They don't have to fight as hard, right? So anyway, with uh, the, the uh, rebuilding process, I would say 12 to 18 months and then shoot for a world title after that. But in terms of his next fight must be somebody in the top 10, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. When Lennox Lewis, again, I keep on saying this, but I have to use it as a point of reference because if I don't, people are going to say, that's ridiculous. AJ's a two-time world champion. Why should he be fighting people outside the top 10? Well, Lennox Lewis was fighting people outside the top 10 when he came back from the Oliver McCall defeat. So if it worked for Lewis and if, if it was okay for Lewis to do that, why is it not okay for Anthony Joshua? <laughs> you know what I mean? The top 10 has so many punches in it these days. Dangerous fighters. I don't think it needs to, obviously there are going to be certain guys in the top 10 who AJ can just annihilate. Yeah, there are going to be certain guys, but it's whether they're available, you know, there's a whole heap of different things that go into it. Um, but if I was managing AJ's career, I'd say, look, it's going to be somebody top 30. I'm not saying it, the person's going to be 25 or even 20. They might be top 15, but I'm, looking for someone not based upon their ranking, but based upon 
their ability and how AJ can actually improve himself against them, work on certain things against them. For his first fight back, I'd want a confidence builder. I might even give him a knockover job for his first fight back. But after that, obviously, I'd step it up and just give him progressively more difficult opponents. Durable, but maybe not dangerous in terms of punching power. Although this is heavyweight, right? So you can't rest on your laurels in that regard against anybody, but there are levels of punching power. So that's how I would approach it. Angel Fernandez isn't saying anything radically different to that. But as I say, with regards to him saying that Fury would find a way to beat Usyk, whether he meant, meant it this way or not, that gives off the vibe to your fighter, either consciously or subconsciously, that you're saying he's not as good as Fury. And if you're supposed to be fighting Fury in December, if that fight goes ahead, imagine having the Angel Fernandez in your corner, who's been giving off these subliminal signs that he doesn't think you're as good as Fury. And I know styles make fights. Boxing is chess, it ain't checkers. Okay? But I'm talking about how a fighter might take it. A fighter might not think about it in that, t- in that way, like, oh, it's chess, it's not checkers. He just thinks that Fury's got a better style for Usyk than I do. He doesn't necessarily think that I'm going to lose to Fury. You know, will a fighter really look at it that way? I have my doubts. And bottom line is, as I've said several times already, I don't really believe in this Angel Fernandez guy. I don't believe in him. I think he's all right, but I would prefer Robert Garcia or somebody else with the right ability and more experience to be at the helm, not in a partnership with Fernandez as the number one and Fernandez number two. So that's my take on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below.